Nice to I meet you. Philip, Rudy. Hi, great seeing you here, Christian. So let's take a seat on the sofa of wisdom, as I call it. Gentlemen, how are you doing? Yes, great. thumbs up from thumbs our CFO. Up. All right, I'm going to introduce you real quickly. We got Christian Schatz, the CFO of Microsoft Germany. We got Rudy Basson, the CFO of Digital Industries at Siemens. And we got Philipp Ageten, he's the head of architecture and development for Data Driven X at Siemens. So, it's good to be here, that's what we said. Finance was not that often around at this stage. We were just talking about the vast amounts of data so We're going to change that, Christine. Okay, so we got to bring us in here. So the question at the very beginning of uh, our get-together, what is Data Driven X? And before we start interviewing we've you, we're going to take a video. So it seems like the data-driven X, or in short, DDX, um, is all about connecting the world of OT to finance. And Philip, I'm going to start with you. Um, can you briefly give us a few more details? What is so innovative about this uh, DDX and where can it help? Or better said, where can customer, what can customers do with it, um, what they couldn't do before? Of course. Um, I would say, as you rightly said, start with the problem first, um, which is basically that you have OT and finance being more or less completely separated ecosystems. Um, and on the other hand side, you see challenges occurring in both ecosystems that you cannot solve in isolation to just take CAPEX to OPEX shift, the need for individualized premiums. All of that is something where you need uh, partners to team up and it's not possible just from a machine builder or machine user perspective, nor from finance possible to just solve that problem because you need to join forces and, and align on, on basic one common basis. Um, which is currently technically not possible. And at exactly at that point, DDX kicks in and provides a secure one-stop shop data platform together with Microsoft um, and make sure that we can capitalize IoT data um, from the shop floor, transform them into shareable risk, uh, shareable um, insights, and then distribute them across all the parties involved, um, which allows then the parties to make better financial decisions. That's the core of what DDX is doing. Um, plus, it also allows us to expand in new like, like business models that haven't been possible so far, um, plus bring new um, financial products and especially dynamic ones to, to life, um, just in the ballpark of automated underwriting, um, individualized claims, uh, individualized premiums, claims processing, and also health monitoring, uh, which is only possible by means of connecting that. All right. All of this is definitely needed. So, Rudy, coming to you, CFO perspective, um, what is your point of view, where it can help, and um, what is driving the demand for mm. DataX? Thanks, Christine. I'm going to build on what Philip was saying before, and it's very interesting to note that these pain points that we talk about, in particular those ones with disruptive character, they are very similar, regardless which industry you're talking about, or even the financial sector. So companies that can leapfrog productivity, speed, the ones that can uh, overcome the complexity or even implement new dynamic business models. And data is at the core of solving that. And because data-driven solutions are going to help companies to stay res resilient. And I'll give you two examples coming out of the insurance industry. If you've heard of parametric insurance, and this is insurance that is triggered if a predefined event or an index is reached. It means, think about it, you take an asset, this asset is connected, you can analyze the data of the past, you can monitor it today, and you can even predict the future. And when a certain temperature range is reached, or I don't know, vibrations, that triggers an insurance payment. 
And the second example is what Philip actually said. It's this change from CapEx to OpEx. Companies don't want to own it. They just want to pay per use. And so for the insurance companies, that means that's a pretty dynamic insurance model that they would like to implement. And then bu bu building the bridge to my friend here on the right, whether you call data the new oil or you say it's gold, it's incredibly important to understand in order to mine that, you need to work together with key partners. So whilst we are the experts in OT, we work with companies like Microsoft who bring in the cloud expertise. So Christian, I guess it's about time now to unveil why Siemens and Microsoft have teamed up on this platform. Absolutely, and uh, great to be here. And uh, thanks for calling me a friend, Rudy. That makes me really feel <laughs> <laughs> At the end of the day, it's about enabling corporations to navigate change with resilience, right? And Philip touched on it. The worlds of OT, IT, financial systems, they are not entirely connected. And no one company can deliver all the value that's needed to actually get us there. And this is where it's just natural that Siemens brings in the strengths from the OT world. Microsoft brings in the strengths uh, from the platform side with AI, with security and all of that. And also being co-creating, creating a joint go-to-market. and. We simply see value for the customer a lot stronger, time to market a lot faster, and simply also the, the way we work together and create value in the ecosystem is benefiting us all. Which is great. And what kind of use cases do we have, Philip? Right, so our current focus is on insurance. So this is where we started with, and we have created three so-called value packages that we created of based around 800 interviews. And the first one that I brought with me today is the one called individualized premiums. Here, the pain point that we're solving is, as Rudy already said, um, we have the need for CAPEX to OPEX shift. And particularly, if you talk about insurance, um, you are um, requiring to have like individualized and dynamic um, insurance premiums. And that is exactly the point where we kick in and provide um, a, a so-called IoT-based insurance together with our partners here from RNV, um, which allows to mimic basically once the machine is um, in a lower productivity mode, then the tariff also goes down, um, which reduces the risk in case like the, the productivity drops for a certain case. Um, the second value package is basically claims management. Here, the problem that we're solving is that it's very labor-intensive to, to file claims, so you need to like to send a lot of emails. Plus, the machine needs to um, be frozen until it has been inspected by the insurance, which is a huge threat and also um, a, a, like a monetary thing that you need to take into account. And the solution that we came up with here is that we're sending directly claims from the machine to the insurance. Plus, we are attaching IoT data to that, which allows then the insurance to fasten up the claims process by approximately 30%. That's number two. And number three is in the ballpark of um, health monitoring. Um, here, the problem, especially for insurance, is that um, once you sign off your insurance contract, um, it goes to the wild and then you don't have any clue of how it performs, how the health condition is, and you simply rely on historic data, basically. And we're changing that situation by means of providing everybody in that ecosystem with health indicators that then the people can do like well-informed decision and make sure that uh, claims actually not occur. And by that, we can reduce the, um, the savings of approximately 10 to 30 percent of like, claims not happening. Mm -hmm. So speaking of disruptions, um, Rudy, how do we proceed or do you proceed when you have a business idea, let's say more on the peripheral, uh, periphery of the traditional portfolio? How can we actually innovate within a partnering model? Because it's quite strict, I suppose, with the possibilities. It's a very good question, Christina. If, First reflection is it's amazing to think Siemens is a 167-year-old company. And 176 okay. years later, we are still a relevant company. And you go, there's not many companies out there in the market that could say that. So it's obviously that we did some things right, including uh, driving innovation in our core peripheral as well as other markets. But we certainly cannot just rest on our laurels. There's things we need to do. One of the things we look out for is what we call the success trap. Just because you're out there and you're successful doesn't mean that you're going to remain successful. And at least for us in digital industries, we like to maintain what we call a healthy level of paranoia, just looking <laughs> out there and understanding. The second thing I can mention is space. Uh, so, Christina, I do not know what you two 
do to relax, I like to walk in the forest. And I very often see that little trees that are planted next to tall ones, they either don't develop fast or not at all. So I'm not a botanist, but I suspect it's the fact that they don't get sun, that the tall trees drink the water, you know, and so forth. And then in large companies, it's similar. So we need to protect startup activities. We need to give them the resources. Third thing, and I'll speed up, is very, very special to me, and that's failing fast. Mm -hmm. Or what I like to talk about is uh, de-risking capital allocation. May not be the same in Microsoft, but in Siemens, sometimes we fall in love with the solution and not the problem. Mm -hmm. And that happens then at times that we spend more resources, capital on a particular issue, where we realize we could have thought earlier it won't, won't work. So we have mechanisms in, in place that force not only customer-centric innovation, but also milestones that we can determine when is enough enough. And last but not least, and probably very, very important, is partnering. Because Siemens is also reliant on working together with our key partners. And why? Because these ideas that we can jointly work together and drive success. And if we do it well, Christian, maybe we can make some of those small plants grow into tall trees. Not just tall trees, I hope, really a forest. And thanks for the visual. Think big. <laughs> I think often in corporations, and our functions are probably guilty of that, we sometimes are a bit too impatient to protect those little plants and the way we move them around. So, And I think particularly the collaboration here between Siemens DI, DDX and Microsoft in general, it's really driven by this high level of innovation and the close proximity to the customers where we really get the value from. And the partnership just shows the synergy of Microsoft's AI capabilities, computing, and Siemens 100 plus years, sorry, I didn't get the exact number right, I think 176. 176 years of industrial automation, and this jointly together will help us accelerate AI, and uh, we really intend to intensify our collaboration here and really drive value for our customers in the market. Super. So that's very well said, I have to say. And um, it sounds like, Philip, the path is paved. And the, where is this honeymoon leading us to? What's next for a DDX? Right, I, I think the most important word here, or the most descriptive word, is expansion. Um, so we are now in the third year of the incubation program here in Siemens. Um, now, basically, we have three directives to expand. Number one is um, currently that we are expanding in the, the areas that we are in. Um, our focus as of today is machinery, but if you look at buildings, at smart infrastructure, at in, uh, like industrial vehicles, you have the same needs and the same products that you can sell. So that's a huge potential for us. Um, secondly, we are looking into expanding on use cases. Um, as I said, currently it's on insurance, but also like, um, like machinery as a service, like banking, you name it. Plus, we are co-creating here with Microsoft to broaden our portfolio in a sense. And, and try to solve the problems more thoroughly. Um, and that, that is basically on uh, the, the second point. And the third one is, it's um, currently our happy home is Central Europe. But if you have a look on like where the big bucks are, uh, that's the US, especially when you talk about finance. So our expansion strategy is together with Microsoft to go to the US and, and hit the ground running um, and be as fast as possible here um, in terms of expansion. And the second big thing is broad market release of the solution that I just laid out. And there, again, we're teaming up with Microsoft, especially when it comes to go-to-market, um, to make sure that we are using our um, like marketplaces wisely to address both ecosystems, so namely the accelerator and the Azure marketplace, plus the sales channel that everybody is aware of what we're doing and what we're capable of together. This definitely continues to be very exciting. Looking forward to seeing you again either next year at Hannover Messe or even earlier, SPS Nuremberg. That could be a perfect spot. Microsoft, you're probably located in Munich, right? Yeah, so <laughs> Nuremberg is not that too far. We're going to talk about that in Close more detail enough. then. Exactly. Thank you Thank so you much. much. The applause definitely well deserved is yours. Oh.